Hello everybody, this is John Buck, back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to do another example for the Laplace transform. This is actually the second example. So if somehow you got to this video before you've watched the definition of the Laplace transform and the first example for the Laplace transform, I strongly recommend you stop this video now, go watch those other two, and then come back to this one. But in this, this video, I'm going to do an example of... of computing the Laplace transform for this signal, x of t, e to the minus, or minus e to the minus 4t, uh, u of, that should be minus t. And we'll see, the reason I chose this example is that it works, uh, it's sort of the other side of the coin from the signal I did in example one. This will have the same algebraic Laplace transform for x of s, but it will have a different region of convergence when we finish. So let's start as we did in the first example, though, by just making a quick cartoon sketch, it's always helpful to build our intuition of how this signal is behaving. Now, because this is unit step with minus t, it means for all positive values of t, the signal will be 0. And meanwhile, for negative values of t, the unit step will be 1, because u to the minus of a minus number will be positive. And so I'll have a negative e to a minus 4, and t will be negative 2, so this will be a positive exponent. So in fact, as t goes towards minus infinity, this exponent becomes bigger and bigger, so I get e to that is bigger, but it's a negative number, so it's going down the other way. So I'll actually get an exponent that looks, a signal that looks like that, that it's 0 for positive time, then for negative time it's blowing up towards minus infinity. So now, if we're going to find the Laplace transform step by step. We're going to start from the definition x of s, same as we had before, is the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, x of t, e to the minus st, dt. And then next we're going to plug in for x of t in the next step. So I've written, I've, I've put the minus sign out front, minus e to the minus 4t, u of minus t, e to the minus st. I sort of regrouped the terms here because it's a product, so I can do that. And so I want you to now think about where I go for the next step, pause the video for a second and think about how does the unit step in this form, u of minus t, let me change the limits on the integrals. Okay, so hopefully you're back now. And the key idea is, is as we drew here in the figure, this is why these cartoons often help, I should have labeled this as x of t, is it makes it clear when the signal is zero when we draw the cartoon, this is zero for t greater than zero. So that lets me change the limits of the integral to say, well, for, ne for negative values of t, u is 1, so I don't need to write it. And for positive values of t, u will be 0, so they don't contribute at all to the integral. So I may as well just have the upper limit be 0, because I can simplify it that way. So now I have this integral, minus of minus infinity to 0, e to the minus 4t, e to the at minus st. My next step is following along what I did on the first example. I'm going to recognize these two have the same base for the exponent, so I can combine them by adding exponents. And when I've done that, I get minus the integral from minus infinity to the zero of e to the minus quantity 4 plus st dt, where I pulled that minus sign out front and the t out to the right side. And so again, a fairly simple integral using the chain rule and exponentials from calculus. I can pull that, write this integral as I've well, I get minus 4 plus s in the denominator, which I've written as s plus 4 here, just to switch it around. And the minus signs from what I pulled down with the chain rule and this minus sign out front canceled. So I have e to the minus s plus 4t left evaluated from minus infinity to 0. So I'm just going to plug in for those, which gives me this formula here, 1 over s plus 4, e to the minus s plus 4, 0, minus e to the minus s plus 4, minus infinity. I'm move this page to give myself a little more room. Okay, so just resetting for a second here, because uh, I think I got out of sync. e to the 0 is going to be 1. For the second piece, this will only converge if this whole thing goes to 0. Well, for that to go to 0, it means I need to, it needs to become e to the minus infinity in the limit. I've already got a minus infinity here. So I need minus s plus 4 to be something positive. So I need the real part of s plus 4 to be less than 0, so that when it's multiplied by this negative number, they cancel each other out, leaving me just 1 minus infinity in the exponent. 
So if I solve this by subtracting the real part of 4 from both sides, I get the real part of s is less than minus the real part of 4. Well, the real part of 4 is just 4, so I get the real part of s is less than minus 4. Right, so when I do that, that's given me my region of convergence. It says if this is true, if the real part of s is less than 4, then this piece here will go to 0, and I'll be left with just this 1 times s plus 4. So I get 1 plus s plus 1 over s plus 4, the same equation for x of s I had before. But now, with the different region of convergence, where I now have the real part of s is less than minus 4 instead of greater than, right? If I go back to my previous example, my region of convergence for this example, on the, the example 1 in the last video where I was looking at this signal in positive time and decaying, my region of convergence is the real part of s is greater than minus 4. Now I have the real part of s is less than minus 4. So there's sort of two parts of the imaginary plane represented by s, one side gives me the causal signal, the other side gives me the left-sided or anti-causal signal. Okay, so that's, uh, that's two examples of the Laplace transform, also showing the importance of why we need the region of convergence, in addition to knowing the algebra equation for x of s. So I'm going to stop here. We'll get some more practice with these in class this week, and I will see you then. I'll see you next time in the next video for those of you in the virtual audience. Take care.